Hi everyone, Damian Long. I am a college guidance counselor here at St. Augustine Prep. I'm also a 2006 graduate of the Prep. I did my undergraduate at Villanova University and just completed my master's at Villanova University in 2014. And my name is Alan Powell. I'm a college counselor here at the Prep. Just joined the staff in January after a career in public education. I did my undergraduate and graduate work at Rider University. So some of the trends that I think we're seeing are a big part revolving around the student's uh, digital image or dig digital profile on the web. Uh, so with your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, Snapchat, all like that, uh, admissions counselors are taking a look at that to really get an understanding of who the student is, not just as they present themselves in their essay or their profile, but how they carry themselves in their social life. Uh, we're seeing companies uh, come forward, such as your LinkedIn, uh, your ZMEs, where students are creating positive digital profiles aimed at college admissions. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing a lot of that. And it seems the students are utilizing this as a way to sell, tell their story to really present uh, what they want the admissions to know about themselves, what they're passionate about. And I think it's really a big shift and not just telling the students to clean up your profile, but also telling them, hey, here's a way that you can harness it and use it to support your application. Right, and to go along with that, in terms of leaving a positive digital footprint, that's real important. But remember that everything that you've done along the way is always there somebody can always find it. It's almost impossible to delete things to the point where people can't find it. And schools and especially companies down the line, maybe a company while you're at school where you'd be looking to do an internship, they are researching students and they are researching them to the point where they've hired professionals to go in and dig out your information. They want to see those pictures of you that are out on the web, those images of you um, at a party somewhere that maybe you don't want. So it's very important that you protect yourself and that you stay away from putting things out on the web that you don't want there. You're right about that. Okay, in terms of applying to um, New Jersey State Universities, I think New Jersey has an outstanding uh, university system. We have some great choices. They're spread out all over the state. Um, different schools have different specialties, so I think those are really good schools to look at. Um, it's very difficult. I can remember, you know, 10 years ago, we could pretty much call up Rowan and say to Rowan, we have a student, would you please consider this student? And we could probably get him in. And that doesn't happen anymore. They're, they're extremely competitive. The other thing that comes into play with that is the finances. Uh, so many um, private schools now are looking for ways to match the cost of public institutions that you should never limit yourself. Apply to the schools you're interested in and wait and see where the chips fall. See if the dollars make sense, see if the education makes sense, the location makes sense. Because in some, in some cases um, an out-of-state school could be closer than an in-state school. So even distance isn't always the issue. Yeah, I completely agree with Alan on that. I, I advise my students to strongly consider the state's uh, universities in New Jersey as well as out of state. Um, I think one of the unique things about New Jersey is uh, we've had a history where I think I read last year in the Washington Post 35 percent of students apply out of state um, and so yes it does uh, pre present an element to Rutgers to really uh, try and keep those high uh, top tier students in state uh, going and not just Rutgers but a lot of your state universities they compete for New Jersey students. I think the other piece that you had mentioned, which is spot on with what I'm seeing our students go through, is when they're looking at the out of state costs um, for a lot of these state schools, it's sometimes a bargain for what they're getting when you're talking about top uh, resources with labs and research and the professors and all the things that they can offer the student uh, for the out of state costs. It's kind of similar to what they would see. Uh, with in-state as well as some of the really good private institutions that our students look at. So, um, especially I think recently with uh, Rutgers, again mentioning them, uh, they were recognized as one of the largest schools with uh, the highest ROI, so return on investment, uh, their business program most notably. And I think how can you not really strongly put that as a consideration if that's the major that you're applying for?
Yes, the, the FAFSA is the um, free application for, for federal student aid, and it's a form that just about every student needs to do, unless you're planning to go to school and have your parents pay the whole way. Um, you need to do this form to, in order to, it's the first step in qualifying for aid. You fill out the form. It's another thing that they're streamlining. The form used to be much more difficult. They've streamlined it. And there was always a big rush in January because um, people were finishing up their taxes and they were rushing around trying to get everything done and get this form in. So what's happened is now they've moved the date. Um, starting in the fall, it'll be October 1st, 2016. Um, and that will be the start date that you can do this now instead of having to wait till January of 2017. And the other piece that affects that date is that it will now be reflecting back to your 2014-15 taxes instead of looking at your 15-16 taxes. So it's got to go back a year because you need to have a complete year of tax information. But keep in mind that the form has now got, become much simpler and they moved the deadline dates to make it easier for you to get this information to the colleges so that they have more time to process it, so that you have more time to process it, and it's become a much more streamlined um, situation. I think one of the other pieces uh, that I, I want to mention to families is um, the prep has partnered with an outside group that uh, comes to the school and really does break down not only the FAFSA but the CSS profile, which is a, another uh, piece of the financial aid application uh, for some institutions and evaluating need as well as grants. Uh, we usually have those, we used to have those workshops uh, at the end of the first semester. Uh, with this push forward, uh, that will be something to definitely be in communication with your counselor. And those workshops are just such a huge help in answering questions. As we know, there's so many pieces to it and each family is unique. Uh, so really having the experts that uh, not only are actively in involved in this field, but are doing research and talking to institutions and knowing what's different from one to another. It's just such a great resource that we've partnered with and it was really successful this past year. Uh, so look forward to those emails coming forward. So I think with College Board going in this direction in summer 2017, looking to offer August SAT, that's really going to benefit our students. Um, I'm always a big person of saying, you know, options are great in really fitting the student's needs. Uh, each student's going to have a different testing plan with so many of our students that apply for the early action process. I think this is just another test that they can have under their belt before those early action deadlines uh, approach. Um, we, they used to only have the October SAT, which was guaranteed uh, to get to schools on time. Uh, and with so many delays that can happen in the process, I think this is really great. I think the other thing, we talk about it so often, students go and uh, do different summer enrichment opportunities, whether it's SAT or, or other academic over the summer, and then they come back and they sit and they wait and they wait for that October SAT, and mm -hmm. so much of that practice is now uh, fall, falling aside with all the coursework. So I think now with the students able to take that summer enrichment opportunity or have that SAT prep and go right into it um, before they get overloaded uh, with just the normal uh, coursework of the year. This should show some students really being in the zone uh, and getting the scores that they want. Uh, so I think this is a good move for our students uh, as well as I think um, down the line it may even become the most popular sitting uh, with October. I, I, can, I agree with Mr. Long. I can see that happening. The August sitting would be Right before the school year starts, students have a chance to prep at their convenience during the summer. It doesn't mean you have to work eight hours a day on it. Just a little bit of time, whatever prep process you're going to be using. And it allows you to finish that, out, finish that SAT before you really go crazy working on those college applications and completing all that information you need to complete from, for college. When you start your senior year, you have the college application, you have new courses, you, got, you have your senior year. We try to keep you, you know, motivated and not allow that, that dreaded term senioritis to, senioritis to come into play. But there's just so much happening. This takes that little bit out of it. You can be, you can be done. You've taken an SAT in your junior year. You take one in the summer. Maybe you don't have to worry about one in your senior year. And yet, if you need to, you can always register and get one more in. Yeah. 
And always uh, remember to talk to your counselor so they can really help you customize a testing plan uh, that's going to fit with your schedule and all the extracurricular activities that you may have with the summer. Uh, and maybe you're a student that you start taking them earlier in your junior year and, and then you already completed uh, the testing in the cycle. Or maybe you, you start with that uh, summer SAT in August. So definitely communicate with your counselor so that they can guide you throughout that.